Welcome back to Sports Line. It's been a fun show so far. Let's go back to the phones and check in with David on line two. David, good evening. Hey, great to talk to you. Yeah, thanks for being on, man. Hey, uh, I just got a comment and a question after the first caller. Uh, I'm a huge Cowboys fan myself, and mm-hmm. I even got married on the 50-yard line in the old stadium. That tells you how big of a Cowboys wow, fan I right. am. Good job by you. I, I would just say that Dallas Cowboys will never, ever get to the Super Bowl with Tony Romo as a quarterback. That's just the way I felt. I felt that way for the, for quite a few years now. He chokes in the playoffs. Now, my question is about the Titans, because I'm a huge Titans fan, too. Um, live in Clarksville, love the Titans, always will. Mm-hmm. What do you think about a quarterback coach? Um, I mean, a, um, a wide receiver coach. Getting a better one. Getting something done with the wide receivers. They need to do something with the wide receivers, and I think it would take our team to the next level. How do you feel about that? And I'll hang up and listen. All right, thanks for the call. Uh, you know, I think they have a pretty good wide, re- wide receivers coach right now in Sean Jefferson, quite honestly. Um, I think the problem is lack of identity for the offense under Ken Wisenhunt, where you're a running team, where you're a passing team, and lack of development of guys like Justin Hunter, Um, I think Doriel Green Beckham is starting to come on. I don't think the wide receiver coach is the problem. I think they need more talent at that position, and I think they need more consistency from the guys that are currently there. I mean, you look at a guy like Harry Douglas, who looks at times like he struggles to get open uh, in one-to-one situations. I mean, this was a guy that was supposed to be the possession slot receiver. Haven't seen that a whole lot this year. Justin Hunter, he's been injured. When he's been injured, he's been woefully inconsistent. You know, Kendall Wright's, uh, you know, a baller. He's, I think he's done a, uh, a, you know, a, a more than a serviceable job, but he's battled injuries. I think you need a con- more of a consistent group in there, and you need more of an identity offensively, which I think is starting to come under Mike Malarkey. Now, whether or not he'll get a chance to continue it beyond this year, we don't know. But I think Sean Jefferson has done uh, a a good job as wide receivers coach. Maybe not a great job, but a good enough job. I don't think he's the problem. All right, the Titans uh, back at practice today, getting ready for Sunday's game in New York against the Jets. Interim head coach uh, Mike Malarkey, as we said, doing his best to audition and make a case for himself that he should have the interim tag removed and become the head coach. Uh, He's had a pretty good impact on the players so far. Uh, Again, huge win over Jacksonville last week. Of course, if they can pull a, a, a win this week in New York against the Jets, that could certainly go a long way towards Malarkey keeping the job. We shall see. But anyway, uh, Mike Malarkey speaking to the media today after Titans practice. We're going to take a listen into what he had to say. But how good they are against the run, talking about the Jets, obviously. Is it a fine line you walk between being stubborn about trying to run the ball or adjusting if it's not working? No, I think uh, you know. I think it's important to stay balanced in your in your uh, in your plan and really your philosophy. Um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna attempt. I mean, that's it's too early to give in already and talk about it. We're we're gonna we we're scheming against what they do, and they do a lot of they do a lot of things. They have a lot of multiple fronts, and um, we've looked at all the games of the whole year of how to attack them, and we'll see how it goes. But um, you know, we're we're getting better. I, I feel run the ball each week, and so it'll it'll be a good matchup along for us. Lines, you've gotten better as games have gone along, running the football. Along <coughs> lines are sticking with it, haven't you? Yeah, and, and again, uh, you talking about early parts compared to we later? Know, yeah, I know at Jacksonville like to get 13 for 20, but in the second. Yeah, half. same thing with Oakland. We 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 started slow. We struggled a little bit. Um, again, both both fronts. Uh, very good against the run, and we made some adjustments and had some better success. And then obviously this last game, uh, we went in and started early with the success on the, in the run game. So we'll we'll, we'll look, do whatever we have to do to get the run going. Um, and we know they're going to try to stop it, and they know we're going to try to make it happen. So it'll be it'll be a, a good test. Where's Marshall rank as far as guys are tough to get in with? Well, he's, he's he's having one of his better years uh, that I can remember. Um, he's just his size, his speed. Um, the, you know, they have, they have a good connection going right now with uh, Fitz, and uh, he's making some. He's doing some things. I'm just watching him on tape. He's finding holes. Doesn't look like it's designed. He's got a good feel for, um, you know, maybe adjusting some of the routes and the quarterbacks with him on it. So uh, 
he's just a threat. We gotta we gotta have a plan for him. We do. We will, and we do. I think. Um, I think everybody does, but he's still he's still pretty potent. So. See anything like Robinson? Are they are they similar at all, Allen Robinson? Uh, I'd I'd say just bigger, um, maybe faster, um, but a serious threat. Yeah, yeah. Anything you can pinpoint? Uh, maybe that Fitzpatrick is doing differently in the last year or two of his career uh, about not turning the football over as opposed to what he was doing earlier in his career. He's making better decisions. I think you, you watch him. He's not trying to force some things that he's he's done earlier. Um, I think some of this this offensive schemes that he's in kind of helps too um, with some of his decision making you know I know I know Chan very well work with Chan in Pittsburgh and uh, there's there's not a lot of room that he puts he didn't put the quarterbacks at risk if he can help it uh, with the scheme that they have but um, yeah he's been very productive obviously going back to last year you remember the game much against him last year with Houston? Uh, I do yes he, he had a good game yeah I do there's not a lot of secrets in this league, but I would say with your relationship with Chan, there's, there's really none in this one, are there? Uh, no. I mean, really, I was really uh, my early in my career when I was with Chan, so I, I learned a lot from him. Um, there's some things, again, I still do to the, today because of Chan, but uh, he's had a great career where he's been. and um, be good to go against him. Chris Ivory is physical a runner as there is in the league right now? If he's not, he's, he ranks up in there in the top tops. He's uh, we know this. He's not going to go out of bounds. We know if he he's going to look for the hole. But if somebody's in the hole, he's going to try to run us over. And uh, I'm going to use the word try as much as I can so our guys get the point. You know, they better have a good pad level or, or it's not going to be a pretty picture. But he is a big physical back. He sounded pretty spirited to, to end up here today. What have the last few days been like? Well, it's been quiet the last two days because no players around. Um, but it was it was good. It was upbeat today. Meetings were good. You know, the pads coming off helped. I, I kind of figured that would help. That usually does. Um, I didn't see any tears shed when they pulled them off. And uh, but that that helped with things. And then uh, you know our, our competitive period always is a good way to end practice. It's always always you know there's somebody has to run and. Unfortunately, that was me today. How much guys benefit from having a couple of days off like the season as far as their bodies and minds? Oh, I think it's really good for them, especially the, the veterans. Uh, we had a lot of rookies in here um, yesterday watching tape and with, with the coaches trying to get them prepared for as much as we had in uh, installed already. So they came in you know, early evening. But I think getting away helps. I think uh, gets their mind right, it clears the mechanism a little bit. and. But we had 44 guys in here Monday and Tuesday getting a workout in, which this time of the year uh, is pretty impressive by our, our players. You had said, uh, I think, earlier that, that Marcus, you can probably see some more running out of Marcus when, when you kind of stepped in. Are we seeing that by, by design now, you think, or, or is it still just kind of? No, I, uh, there is more by design. Again, a lot of it was based on his health. Um, and again, obviously, it's it's better, but we I mean we've talked as well as uh, you know I heard I heard the question about when do we want him to run? It's a feel thing for him. I mean it's it's how the protection is holding up the what he sees in front of him. Uh, but I have no problem with him. Again I'm I'm an advocate of these guys. I'm good with them running. If you looked at that that long run, there were some really bad angles taken on him, and um, that happens a lot when when these guys with this kind of speed or or uh, Break in the pocket. So, so good. I was going to say, does, does it help that he's a pretty bright guy too? He doesn't seem to take a lot of unnecessary. No, he doesn't. Uh, no, he's he's very good at uh, trying to avoid contact. You know, in, in a couple of those design runs that we got him out of the pocket with a lead lead player around the edge. Um, he, he's, you know, he went through a couple. He ran through some tackles. And again, that that's not something I'm worried about. I'm just worried about a clean clean shot on him. And I don't think. I think he's smart not to take those. I know that his running can help uh, open up passing opportunities. Does it help the, the running backs at all as well? I think it helps our whole offense that they know that we have, no matter what, we have formations and personnel groupings that look, you know, they're passing 
possibly formations and downs and distance, but we'll run him and we'll design runs that we have we have enough guys to block all their guys because as soon as the quarterback can run, the, the level of the playing surface is even and we have guys for their guys and that puts a threat on defenses. If you're not where you're supposed to be, you're going to get creased. Mike, when they put a spy on Marcus, is that ideal for this offense? Because that takes one guy out of maybe a bigger play. It does. It's one less rusher, one less cover guy, and then I, um, I, I'm anxious to see somebody try to spy on him and have success. Looking back to it seemed like the last year or two, talking about quarterback hits, it seems like we saw Jake Locker take some pretty wicked hits and maybe maybe Zach too. We don't seem to see as much with with Marcus as I go back to his. Uh, uh, I think we're. I think we're doing a better job up front with the protections. We've changed some protections. We've added some protections. We've added more people in to help chip on the edges. Um, Marcus does a, a good job of moving around in the pocket. He's very good with that. He's typically better with ball security in the pocket, but he, he does. He's, he's good with his drops, but he does a really good job of stepping up in the pocket. And that, again, is a lot of avoiding the rush and the hits. We did. We did. On that run, when you see guys busting it downfield to try and get a block to help you get in the end zone, what does that say about the emotional investment of this team despite the record? Well, that says a lot about these guys. Uh, I mean, it, it's what we want. Uh, we, we, in the offseason, we showed tape of what we wanted of receivers going down the field and um, doing things like that. and. So it, it's been talked about way back, even in uh, the first time they, they came in the building, we showed them tape from NFL games that showed receivers springing running backs where they could walk into the, so, and what we said is we would like to have you guys on this tape. I mean, that, that was the biggest emphasis. I, I don't want to show you other teams. I want to show you um, our team doing that. And so we got a lot of, we have a lot of good tape to show these guys, uh, you know, for young guys that are going to come in here at some point. Are you just a guy who can still take He's still that guy. Yeah, he's still that guy. He's a he's a problem out there. Now he's got another one on the other side too with uh, Cromarty. It's it's not a good, you know. They got some good cover guys. Do you attack them the same way you attack anybody else, or you have to to say we, we're able well, to you, them? Well, yeah, you got to scheme a little bit with them. Um, try to get away from them. Now they may match up. I don't know how they're going to match up with us based on. Uh, uh, who's going to be playing? I don't know how they're going to do it, but again, he's he, he's still I think he's in the concussion protocol still, so we'll we'll deal with that when it comes up. But we're 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 preparing like he's playing. Aaron, head coach Mike Malarkey of the Titans ahead of this Sunday's game with the Jets in New York. We'll take a break, and come back, and hear from Marcus Mariota, the Titans quarterback, doing something that no other quarterback has ever done. According to our Jason Wolf, who was on with us earlier in the show, we'll get to that and more in your phone calls next.